Hey guys and welcome back to part 2 of creating the peephole in our door. So in yesterday's episode what we did was we created the door itself so we can actually open and close it and in today's episode we're going to be making the actual peephole so we can look through, look around with the camera and all that good stuff which you actually want to make for this door. So again I split it into two parts just how long it was but without further ado let's get right into it because you already know what we're going to make. So let's go back into our door BP here. So now let's set up to see whether or not the player is inside the door, so whether they can or can't use the camera. So that's very simple as well. We're going to right click inside box collision, add event, add a component begin overlap, right click it again, add event, add a component end overlap, and the same way we did before, the other actor we're going to cast to our character, which for me is the third person character, and we're going to do that on both of these like so. Because again, we want to see whether it's our character or not. Then we only need to do one more step and that's create another variable again making it a boolean naming this one is inside or can use camera anything along those lines and i'm going to set that to be true off of begin overlap so tick it and set it to be false off of end overlap so leave it false like so select this hit c to comment it naming this one check if player is inside and again this is so we can only use the camera if we are on the correct side of the door so that will then work perfect for us. So we can compile and save that. Now we want to actually set up the code for us to be able to use the camera so we can actually look through it. This is also very simple and I'm going to do this in a function to make it a bit more efficient. So on the left down here you can see we have functions. I'm going to hit the plus function naming this one toggle camera or toggle use, toggle peephole, anything along those lines. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to create an output. I'm going to give this a parameter of success question mark like so leaving it as a boolean compile that because we want to only be able to do the next part of the code after this so after the function if this has been successful so i'm just going to move that out a bit and disconnect it like so what we want to do next is hold down b left click to get a branch connecting that into the input there the condition is going to be is inside because again we only want to be able to use the camera if we are inside so we're on the correct side of the door out of false going to get a return value so add return node with a success as false because if we can't toggle the camera then it's not been successful and we don't want to do the part of the code after this function then we're going to hold down b left click to get another branch connecting that into the true of the first branch the condition is going to be a new variable we're going to make so we hit the plus variable again naming this one is looking question mark again connecting that into the condition there so what this variable is doing is seeing if we are already using the camera or not so you can name this is using camera or anything like that. But again, this is going to check to see if we're already using the camera. If we are, we want to stop using it. So what we're going to do is firstly set the boolean again. So set it off of true to be false. And then we'll set it off of false to be true. Because then if we're not looking, we want to then start looking. Then we want to actually move the cameras. So that's very simple. We're going to get a reference to our character reference that we made earlier. So get character reference there. Move this out a bit more. And then we also want to right click and get the player controller. Out of the player controller, we're going to set view target with blend. And that's going to simply just transition our camera with a nice blend as you saw at the start of the video. We're going to connect that into the set is looking. The target is the get player controller and the new view target is our character reference there. So when we stop looking, we're going to start looking through the player's camera again. So we're possessing the player like normal. The blend time I'm going to set to be about 0.5 or 0.3 so it's not too quick and it's not too slow but it's also not just an instant snap it kind of looks like the player is just moving their head and eyes up to the hole to make it look a little bit nicer. We can leave everything else the same. Then we can connect that into the return value there and we're going to tick success this time because if it has done it then it's been successful. Then we can just select the set view type with blend, control C, control V, connecting that into the set is looking to true. Target is again going to be the get player controller and the new view target this time is going to be self. So when we want to start looking through the camera here, what we're going to do is just set the target to be the camera in this blueprint or we can just set it to be this blueprint. Again, connecting that into the return value there. So let me run you through this. What's going to happen is if we're on the correct side of the door, we can then toggle the camera. If we're already using the camera, we're going to stop using it and go back to looking through the player's camera. And then if we're not already looking, we're going to start looking and start looking through this blueprints camera instead. I might just move that down a bit like so. So we can compile, save, and we can close this function as that's all we need to do in here. 
So again, this works perfectly and we've done it here just to make it a little bit more efficient like so. So again, let's close that. And now what we can do is set it up to use this. So I'm gonna expand this comment just a little bit up here and then we're gonna right click and search for the other action event we made. So I named that door peephole like so. So then we want to look through the camera, we're gonna do that. So pressed is gonna go into enter there. I'm gonna double click this, get some root nodes. And as you see, what's gonna happen is out of exit, it's gonna check to see if we want to open the door. Because if we press the peephole, that will be false. So we can then do that code. But if we press E to open the door, that's gonna be true. So it will do the door code. So again, false here off the branch out of exit is how we're gonna look through the camera. So out of false, what we're gonna do is actually call that function. So I named mine call function toggle camera like so. And as you can see, we have this success output parameter here. So to use that, we're gonna hold down B, left click to get a branch. The success is the condition, the execution going in there. And then true, we want to do something else. False, we don't wanna do anything. True, we want to be able to move the camera. So toggle camera is allowing us to look through it, but true, we want to actually be able to move it as well. So what I'm gonna do is just under here, I'm gonna right click, adding a custom event, naming this one move camera. And if I go back up to the branch, so I've just done that, sorry. If I go back up to the branch, true, we're just going to call function, move camera, and false, we won't do anything. As now this is that part of the code set up. So we're gonna be able to use the door or look through the camera dependent on which one we want to do. And now we're just gonna finish up the video. We're setting up the code for actually being able to move the camera as well. So we can compile and save that. Let's go back down to this custom event for moving the camera like so. So actually I'm gonna move this over here a little bit because we want to do some code before that. So here what I'm gonna do is right click and get input axes look up. So the look up input axes there. And I'm also going to get the turn input axes. Axes events turn there. And this is because we want to use these to move the camera because this is just our mouse movement up and down and left and right. Let's do the look up first. So we're gonna hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting that in there. The condition is going to be is looking. So again, this is to see whether or not we're using the camera. Because if we're not using the camera, we want to just be able to use the player's normal controls. So what we're gonna do is get a reference to our character reference again down here. Get character reference. Out of this, I'm going to add controller pitch input and the pitch because it's up and down. False goes into that and the value is gonna be the axes value from the input axes look up there like so. So again, if we're not looking, we're gonna be using the normal camera controls. And the reason we had to do that is because we're enabling the input when we're close enough. So it will try to use the camera control to the door instead. So this just fixes that issue. Out of true, we want to move the camera. So I'm gonna create two new variables. So hit the plus variable, naming this one pitch for up and down. And I'm gonna change this to be a float. And then I'm gonna create another new variable, naming this one your, also keeping it as a float, and that one's for left and right. So we'll do that one in a minute. Out of the axes value here, I'm going to get a float plus a float. Can I connect that to the bottom value, not the top? And the top value is going to be our pitch variable we just made. I'm just gonna double click these to get some root nodes to keep it nice and organized, looking neat and tidy as well, like so. And so what this does is it adds the axis value onto our pitch, and the axis value is how much we're moving our mouse, pretty much. So out of this addition, we're also going to get a clamp float, like so. So it's only gonna go between two values we set, so you can't move the camera too far left, too far right, or too far up or too far down. This one is obviously up and down. So the minimum I want to be minus 40 and the maximum I want to be 20. Now I've got those from previous videos and testing which I've done. However, a way to find out is you go to the viewport, you select your camera and you just move it. So if I rotated it up by 40, I believe I have. So no, 20 is how far I can go up. So you see that's how far it goes up and then minus 40 is that, so that's how far I can go down. So obviously choose it to be whatever you like and it is literally you just do this to find out the different values which you have. Go back to the event graph and you can put those into the clamp there. The return value of the clamp, we want to reset the pitch. So set pitch there. So we're setting it to the value of addition clamped between these values and the set is gonna go into the true of the branch there 
but I'm actually going to move this down a bit like so. So like I say, it only goes between the values which we want it to go between. And then by default, this is going to be inverted. So to re-invert it back to normal, we're just going to get a multiplication. So a float multiplied by a float, and we can just multiply it by minus one. So now we have the correct controls for moving the camera up and down. So I hope that makes sense for you. So again, what we're doing is we're just getting a variable for the pitch, and we're adding it to the axis value because that's how much we are moving the mouse. So we've just made this input axis for the camera instead. And then what we're going to do is out of this, we're also going to then make rotator. And that's going to go into the pitch, not the roll. And then we'll do the yaw in a second. The roll can stay as it is. And we're making a rotator because we want to rotate the camera. So now let's do left and right as well. And it's very simple. It's pretty much the same thing. So what we can do is we can actually copy this branch here with is looking like so. And then we'll come out the character reference again. And this time we're going to add controller your input so it's left and right. Again, that's going to go into false of the branch there, with the value being the axis value once again, like so. And again, just going to rewrite these to keep it nice and organized, looking neat and tidy. And what I'm also going to do is actually just copy all of this code up here. The pitch, addition, clamp, and set. Control C, Control V, connecting the true into the set pitch there. And then all I'm going to do to make this work properly for the yaw is this pitch variable here. I'm going to drag and drop yaw to change it there and do the same for set. In the addition, I'm going to connect into this axis value down here. And now we have the same code working perfectly for the yaw instead of the pitch. And so that will work perfectly. And now we can just drag the yaw into the yaw of the make rotator there. So now again, we're moving the camera up and down and left and right dependent on the player's mouse controls. But to actually move the camera, we need to use this make rotator we've just made. So that's where we're now using this move camera custom event we made earlier. So we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting that into there, where the condition is going to be is looking. And we're doing that because we want to create this as a loop. And this branch here is what's going to end the loop when we want to, because true will move the camera, false will do nothing. When it does nothing, it's going to break the loop. That will make more sense when we finish the code. So now we're going to drag and drop a reference to our camera in here. And out of this, we're going to set relative rotation because we want to rotate the camera. Again, connecting that into true. The new rotation is going to be the return value of that make rotator we've just made. And then after this, we're going to hold down D, left click to get a delay with the duration as 0 0.001 to keep it really quick. And the completed is going to be move camera. The reason we want to keep it really quick is because if it isn't, then your camera is going to look like it's glitching and it's lagging which obviously we don't want. However, that there should finish the code for us and this should be working perfectly. So I'm just going to select this, hit C to comment it, naming it move camera. So we can compile and save and like I say, this should work. So we can hit play to test this out like so. So we go up to the door, we hit E, it's going to open, we hit E again, it's going to close and we can move our camera like normal. If I press H, what's going to happen is we then looked in through the door. However, you can see that didn't work perfectly as the values are a little bit off. So let's take a look at why that's done that. So the reason it's done that is because if we select the camera, you can see it's rotation as zero, zero, and then 90 on the Z. And this is why I said earlier we wanted to keep it all as zero. And I believe that will have happened when I parented it onto the door. So again, that's why I said to keep it all as zero because it makes the math easier. So if I were to put these all as zero, what would happen? It would then look that way. So what we could do is rotate everything to work perfectly for that again. However, it's just gonna be easier for us to not do that. So we're gonna to have to change the values. So by default, the yaw is zero, so we can leave that as zero. But the Z, so the pitch, is 90. So we need to select our pitch variable down here, setting the pitch to be 90 by default. So that's what it starts using. Go to the event graph, but then you need to also change the pitch here, these clamp floats to be something different. So these were set up for zero. So what we can do is just get 90, it's minus 40 from it, set that as the minimum. So obviously the minimum would then be 50. The maximum, we're gonna add 20. So that's gonna be 110. We can compile and now this should work perfectly for us. So that's kind of good that was in there. So I've just shown you how to debug it, what works, what doesn't, and how to fix it. So now if we hit play, this should work again. We can open and close the door, hit H, then we're gonna do that and that actually didn't work because I realized I changed it on the pitch, not the yaw. Because pitch is up and down, yaw is left and right, so we just did that the wrong way around. So that's my bad. 
we can just control Z to undo all of that like so. Now let's do it properly. So sorry, that's my bad. So the yaw is what's 90. So we can set the yaw here to be 90, not zero. And then do the same thing here. So set this to be 50, set this to be 110. Compile, play, now this should work perfectly. Hit E, open and close the door, hit H. We can look through and that works better for us. So again, that's my bad, they made a stupid mistake. And we can also move our camera around perfectly like so. And you can see it clamps between these values. So we can only look in this radius. Hit H again, we're gonna go back out the door. If we go onto this side, we hit H. We can't look through the door because we're on the wrong side of it, but we can still open and close it. So this works perfectly for us. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. We set it up so that we can use this door like normal so we can open and close it. And we can also look through that door peephole there by pressing H or whatever button you want. And like I say, it's gonna look through it and clamp our camera between two values so we can't look any further. And if you're on the wrong side of the door, we can't look through the people, so it's kind of like a one-way thing. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.